Well, these are the tracks which have come from China. They're my wild panther tracks which I bought over Alibaba website. Now, they're going to be going on my little Tetrarch tank. You can see these tracks here are my old Argo tracks and uh, they're still usable. They've, I've, they've not had a lot more uh, use than when I first uh, fitted them to be honest with you because I don't get it out that often. Um, when I do I try to give it a run round on grass and so on if I can. Uh, they're really mud and snow tracks. Um, somewhere around some of the, the treads actually have Argo stamped in them. Uh, they're nylon, they're individual uh, links. So the plan is I'm going to be changing these out for these um, rubber slash nylon continuous tracks. So I'm going to be opening these up and rolling them out and taking a little look and see what they're like and identifying the various parts. There we go. You can see they come with this metal linking uh, component. So there's going to be some sort of pin which will run through. Now hopefully these things have got all the parts with them still. They might be in the other track. Um, all parts in one bag with one track. So I'm going to have to open the two up and, and, and inspect it. Okay so there's the tank out. I meant to video me driving out the garage and forgot. But there you go, that's what happens when you're on your own. Now there's a set of tracks laid out on the floor. So you can see it's at least double the length, plus a little bit for the vertical parts at, at both ends. Now, if I was a smart person, I'd get a length of string and I'd, I'd uh, pull it out, put a knot in it maybe to the length, rather than cut the piece off. Um, and then I'd wrap it round and see if it was actually correct. But because I'm not a smart person, I'm not going to think of that. And I'm just going to go to hell with it. I'm going to knock the pins out and I'm going to hope for the best. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just undoing my little rub screws on these uh, collars which I've done. See I've made a few of these collars myself because the old ones tend to rust up as you see there and when you come to take them off you have to get an angle grinder and pretty much destroy that collar in the center because they tend to rust on to the to the pin so you basically grind it right through halfway and then chisel the thing out um, pretty much and then knock the pin out And then a pair of mole grips on the end. If I'm very lucky. Oh yeah. That's how you want it. So basically these track links have got a little section uh, turned in the middle right so you can see uh, where the collar fits in I can see from this that the new tracks are actually longer than the originals. 
but I don't think it would be very wise to go cutting them off before I've actually fit them because the profile on the um, on the uh, what would you call these on these lugs might be such that the tire sits in differently they might sit prouder um, on the tire so that wouldn't be a sensible idea to go sawing it off okay I've pulled the track I've ran it onto the track and I've pulled the track back over to the back and you can now see that the standard uh, track that comes from uh, um, Wild Panther is a good few links too long which is always better than it being a few links too short it looks like I'm going to be cutting one, two, three, four, five of these off I've basically looked here on the tyre, um, now as I say it's not absolutely drum tight here um, because I've got a bit of slack but I've basically counted round and I've got four at the base so I need four coming down from a point here where I'm going to call the middle one, two, three, four and then that last point there, I've marked that across and that's the point where I believe I should cut it off As I was inside the tank, I have no idea how the tracks look when I'm driving it. So, that's the idea of uh, using video cameras, I suppose. Play it back and see how they look. And before I start doing any turns, I think that's what I need to be doing.
problem I've got right now is the tank's not being used probably in a couple of years uh, and the uh, the steering brakes at least on one side are not are not performing so I can't do any proper turns um, and even the side that is performing is not working very well it's one of the problems I've had with this uh, for some time. I've actually got silicon brake fluid in it at the moment. And uh, even that doesn't seem to help. It's, it's, it still goes a little bit uh, poor on performance. I think I've even got uh, Kevlar brake pads in to improve performance on the disc brake. Anyway, it looks like I need to do a little bit of maintenance on the hydraulics before I can do any real testing of this. Now, you can see down there at the bottom corner that there is a lot of slack in this. But before I go just taking more uh, track off it, I'm going to make sure that the brakes are working and I can do some proper testing. Okay, I managed to do a little bit of uh, testing of this on grass last weekend at the Southport Festival of Transport. Just a couple of minutes just to see what it would behave like on grass. Uh, I didn't really want to go testing it too much here behind the house as I don't want to upset uh, neighbours by hogging up the area anymore than uh, I should really do. Now, um, also I don't want to sort of like damage the gravel area, this gravelly tarmac in this area, I don't want to start ripping that up if the tyres, sorry, if the tracks do grip very well. Now, um, problem I th I'm having is the tyres are spinning inside these tracks. I've also got an issue with the brakes which I've still got to resolve but I'll be looking into that. I'm going to put a, um, a pump system um, 
to bleed the brakes, you know, one of these um, suction jobs. I'll get that out a little bit later. But these um, tyres, see, they're just these came with the thing uh, years ago, and you can see I've not really worn them down at all. The side walls were starting to uh, to crack, but that seems to be common even with very brand, uh, very new. Uh, um, flotation uh, tires you know this type these are um, 22 by 11 by 8 they're 8 inch rims on this now what I'm thinking I need because these tires are spinning in here you can see by the profile they're extremely curvy uh, now if they were just being used um, as tyres straight onto the road surface, that wouldn't be too bad. But if you look down here, there's nothing really. They they just sort of spin inside of this track area. And initially, I thought, well, that'll be all right. They'll, they'll, they'll grip on the tracks, but it's all too smooth. The the rubber area and this is just um, far too smooth and they're just spinning so I need a tread pattern that will grip into these tracks now basically you've got two inches here and you've got around two inches there in the actual um, what would we call it um, grip point, the tooth the uh, lug on the tracks you know um, so I'm looking for something with a spacing something like that that um, you know some sort of tire pattern which maybe will sweep, sweep across like so you know in a V and grip in between these track points now I did have a look at a guy's videos this morning from a couple of years ago and he seemed to have some sort of Pirelli tires um, I've also been looking on the web at some made by, I think it's ITP, uh, which look quite good. Um, basically, uh, been just doing a bit of a hunt around. Now, I could still take some more track out on this and tighten it up that way, but I don't want to go too far for obviously, for, well, for obvious reasons. I don't want to um, take too much track out. Now, if I change the tyres, it could be that the tyre profile will fit into these tracks tighter. And I'm thinking that might be the line I should be going. The problem I'm having is it's probably fairly um, common. I'm suspecting to a lot of the old, uh, this is an old KB model Argo from late 70s, maybe early 80s. Came with a Kohler engine uh, originally, uh, a petrol um, 18 horsepower. Now I've put a diesel into it now uh, a few years ago to give it a bit more torque. Now, so basically the brake system it's hydraulic and it's run in these these are actually plastic um, hydraulic cables with a nylon uh, sorry with a stainless steel braid over them now I was told at the time that's the stuff to get um, they're nice and flexible and they go right round to the back of the um, the brake units for the steering you know the steering levers so there's no sort of real issues with them um, the flexible and I was told that's the best stuff to get rather than fitting copper ones in so that's what I went with now I did strip these uh, these um, brake calipers off a few years ago 
and freed them all up and so on but I didn't strip them into two halves you see they ha seem to have a line down the center and if you unbolt these things um, they have a gasket and so on in the middle if I remember rightly and you can split the caliper in half so it could be that I ne need to spend some time um, stripping them down and doing a really good service on them uh, you can see they operate it on these inboard disc brakes which are each side of the transmission uh, this here is the extension um, for operating the gears that I fitted on uh, several years ago when I first converted it to a tank and moved the steering to the other end of the vehicle so it became rear engined so uh, yeah so you can see basically this comes off the gearbox top runs to a linkage there basically it's a right it puts a right angle in and then it's got a pipe which runs right down the side of the body to a lever basic simple lever which is just sticking out over there you can see I've marked three points on the side on a piece of uni strut there's three points so one's forward neutral and then reverse those points marked with a black marker pen so that gives me a rough point where I can stick the gear lever so I know what gear it's in uh, other things I've got on the dash uh, rev counter that's a, a bit of a leftover from when I had a, um, a 400cc motorbike engine in it it doesn't actually work now uh, got the lights on the dash there they work then I've got fuse uh, box there ignition key underneath and uh, so on and I've got uh, a monitor for reversing down there which is hooked up to this little reversing camera uh, mounted here on the back I've got a fan switch on the dash which also will turn this on manually if I decide I want to get a little bit uh, of the um, the heat away from the engine and so on yeah usual Argo duplex chain drive down inside there and I've put some aluminium covers over the top of it so that you can take them off easily they're into each one so it's basically four covers if I remember right yeah it's four covers yeah so um, that's my little Chinese V-twin engine <coughs> a Chinese V-twin engine down there um, this antenna here is the one that is uh, connected on my tank radio which I built a few years back tank radio is just down there it's got a um, PMR walkie talkie set built in and it's got a tuned antenna which is just just here with uh, old fashioned DV 27 CB aerial mount on the base uh, so you can disconnect it quite easily handy handy little uh, antenna and it works quite well it's also got uh, an mp3 player inside the radio so uh, you can play uh, whatever um, Kelly's Heroes soundtracks and stuff like that out of it yeah so uh, as I say, need to sort out the issues with these uh, with these tyres and the braking. Now, this is the brake bleeding vacuum pump, which I need to use to bleed the uh, to bleed these brakes, and uh, it's more efficient 
uh, performs better than uh, the old conventional way of doing things. At least that's what I've found when I've used it in the past. I've only used it one time. Uh, you fit the pump on with these pipes and so on and uh, the fluid is evacuated from the system into uh, this bottle here from what I can remember. So uh, you put the fluid in in the usual way at the, um, at the brake master cylinder which on here is behind the dashboard um, just possibly see them there's one for each of the, of the brake levers so you put the fluid in down there and you hook this system up onto the calipers down down inside there on the transmission each side of the transmission and uh, you suck the air out that way. Yeah, so uh, I've got to try that on the brakes. I might give that a go today if I've got the time. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a look on the internet, see what tyres I can find. There's a few on there, but I just can't make my mind up at the moment. Um, America seems to have a lot of uh, tyres. I've even been looking at the sand tyres. Now, sand tyres have basically got very few uh, ribs across them, probably about eight, which isn't very many. And they basically just run straight across the uh, the tyre the from one side to the other, most of them. But they seem to have a uh, problem in that they've got like a scoop on them. So they're only going to function properly to grip in one direction. So when I do a reverse, um, try to turn it in reverse, it's not going to work again. It's going to just jump. So they don't seem to be a, a good idea. I want a tire tread. I don't know, probably with about 20, um, you know, like tread ribs running across, which will grip into that tyre profile. Um, I've got some of the, the track I've cut off here. So, you can see just how... Uh, how smooth it is in there. There's nothing for um, for those knobbly um, ATV tyres to fit to, to grip into. So I need to get that sorted out. Then things will be good again. Just bled the brakes. So I'm gonna give it another little go. I've just used the brake pump. Um, the vacuum pump, this thing, just use this to bleed the brakes, so let's see how it performs now. I suspect it's still got some big issues and partly it's going to be to do with the tyres, 